bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken and great are you
you have been so, so kind to me. Totally overwhelming, never ending, reckless love, God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found these ninety-nine. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Your phone, still you love for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt the worth, you paid it off for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Overwhelming, never ending, reckless love, God. Oh, it chases me down, fights in my mouth, leaves and hides behind. Oh, I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, you're coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, a lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, you're coming after me. Mountain, you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found these nights. No, I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Good morning, Bridge Church. We are so glad that you have joined us today. The Bridge Church is very excited to come alongside you so you can take your next steps to cross over to your destiny. Make sure you visit yourbridgechurch.com and click on the tab Next Steps. Here you will learn how to take your next steps. Under this tab, you will learn how to belong to the Bridge Church, how to follow Jesus, and how to be a leader. We offer virtual classes for you to take your next step. Every week, we have an opportunity to connect with each other during the week. The first one is virtual groups. 
They take place virtually on Mondays and Fridays. You can find out more information from the Bridge Church Facebook page or the Bridge Church website. We also have a Pray First call that takes place every Monday at 7.30 in the morning where you can join by phone. The information is also on Bridge Church webpage and on the Facebook page. Our incredible Bridge Kids team has made lessons and activities available for you as a parent to help you grow the faith of your child or children. These are uploaded each week and can be accessed on your Facebook page as well as the Bridge Kids Facebook page. Once again, we're so glad that you've joined us this morning. Let's get our hearts ready as we prepare for the sermon. God bless you. What an amazing time of worship we have just had together. And man, I'm so glad that uh, you have chosen to spend a few moments with us here this Sunday morning uh, at the Bridge Church. I, I want to tell you, in this world, we are seeing so many different things happen all around us. But I have just really felt a confidence in my spirit that we are secure in Christ Jesus. And we began a brand new sermon series a few weeks ago uh, entitled Secure, simply because our life has been shaken in so many different ways. And when our security begins to decrease, insecurity begins to rise in our spirits and in our hearts. Uh, and, and insecurity is all around us. All we have to do is look out the window, turn on the radio, watch TV for a few moments, and you, you feel an unrest and an insecurity building. But I truly believe there are things as a believer that we can be secure and confident in. We talked about being having a secure hope in Christ Jesus. Last week we talked about uh, being secured by the Holy Spirit uh, at work and alive in us. And you know, uh, talking about security reminds me uh, when I was younger in college and we do so many crazy things when we're young and we think they're good ideas at the time. Uh, but I was living in Indianapolis and some of my friends and I decided that we were just going to take a quick uh, trip to Chicago, which was about four or five hour drive from where we were at. And we were just going to go spend a few hours downtown Chicago and then turn around and drive back. This is what college kids do. They think it's a great idea. So we got in our cars one afternoon and we drove all, or one morning drove all the way up to the Chicagoland area. And we had planned everything well, except for one problem. We had forgotten how many tolls there were when you got into the Chicagoland area. And we entered onto the tollway and uh, we realized really quickly that we didn't have any cash on us. And at the time, the credit cards were not actually uh, uh, available to use for purchase. And someone had the great idea in the car, I can't remember, one of my friends said, you know what, people throw coins in the baskets at the toll plaza and they miss all the time. There has got to be a bunch of coins on the ground that can pay our tolls. So we decide this is what we're going to do. We pulled up to the toll booth and uh, we all jumped out of our cars at the toll booth and we looked all over the floor for coins, trying to find coins to pay for our toll. And uh, uh, cars behind us were honking. The toll booth employee was upset and coming over. And quickly we gathered enough coins off the ground, threw them in, the arm went up and we went down the tollway and everything was fine after all. All of that. Now, I'll tell you, we all looked at each other and said, man, what an amazing plan. Now, I don't, I don't recommend that any of you would do something this ridiculous and crazy, but man, we had provision in the hour of our need. Uh, maybe we were tested God a little bit, but man, we had what we need and God provided in that moment in an unbelievable way. 
Now, the truth is, situations uh, like this are, are ridiculous when we really think about them, what we do in these moments. And while I don't encourage you to do that, I do believe that all of us have been in moments of incredible need. Maybe you're facing a moment of incredible need right now. And we have to recognize that we are secure as God's children. God sees each and every need that we have in our lives. Reminds me of a story in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 through 18. I'd like to read this morning to us. The Bible says, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. And when he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out to the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in a distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and come back to you. Abraham took the wood for burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire uh, and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and he took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its thorns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called out to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to him, and he says, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Now this story is so phenomenal in so many ways. It's a pivotal moment in scripture where we find that Abraham is willing to sacrifice his own son to please and follow the instructions of the Lord. Now, we know that God would not require Abraham to sacrifice his own son, but what the true story we find in Genesis chapter number 22 is the faith that Abraham exhibited in this moment to show that he was willing to do whatever God asked of him to do. And I want to encourage you this morning as well that God has plans for your life and God has purpose for your life and you can be confidently secure that when God asks for you to do something, if you will boldly step out in faith, God will be your provider just as he was for Abraham. 
You see, this story tells us that Abraham told his son that God would provide for them. And it was in Abraham's willingness to trust securely that God would provide whatever they needed that it gave Abraham the confidence to act in courageous faith in this moment. And today I want to encourage you that as a child of God, you can walk in faith because we understand that our God is Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees and the God who provides. Your provision is secure because of who Jesus Christ, our Lord, has revealed himself to be. So how does God actually provide? How does this occur? Well, we have to answer a few questions. And I, I think we find uh, uh, some insights into the scriptures that can help us understand how we can trust that our provision is secure because of Christ Jesus our Lord. And it's found in this story in Genesis chapter 22 that we just read. So first of all, the question we must ask ourselves is where does God provide my needs? Well, in the story that we just read, Genesis 22:14 says that Abraham was going to the mountain of the Lord because the Bible says it was on the mountain of the Lord that it will be provided. In other words, God provided for Abraham in the place of his assignment. Whenever we are operating in God's assignment for our life, we will receive God's provision. Now, this does not mean that it won't be difficult at seasons. It doesn't mean that it will be easy all the time. But we can be secure in understanding and knowing that if I am walking in the assignment that God has given to me, I can trust securely and confidently in the fact that God will provide and He will meet my needs in my assignment. So not only do we see where God provides assignment, but we see when uh, does God provide our assignment in this text as well. Well, the Bible tells us, that, and it shows us in this scripture, that God did not give provision to Abraham until he actually needed the provision in the moment that he needed it. In other words, God meets our needs in the time of our needs. Hebrews 4.16 says it like this, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You see, God's provision often arrives in my need to help us out in that time of need. In other words, the provision of my need being met is not met on the front end. It doesn't, it's not met until I'm in the moment of my need. This means I'm already feeling it. I'm already experiencing it. I'm frightful possibly because of what's ahead of me. But God reminds you and God reminds me today. And we must be reminded one more time that even when we feel the need upon us, we serve a God in heaven who is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And in the moment of our need, God comes in to that moment and He provides our needs in the moment. He meets my needs while I'm in it and He makes provision for it. You see, often our needs seem to be met by God later than we had hoped for. However, we must trust that God's timing is always perfect. And God is orchestrating things on your behalf and on my behalf to show himself strong and say, I am the God who provides for my children. So how does God provide for you and for me? Well, often he provides in ways that appear rather natural. 
For example, in the story that we just read a few moments ago, we find that Abraham, in the moment where he was about to sacrifice his own son Isaac, there was a ram that was caught in the thicket. God didn't send a herd of sheep. Instead, God sent one ram on that mountain because it was only one ram that Abraham needed. Abraham could have easily overlooked it as a coincidence. Abraham could have said, well, there just happened to be a ram there. Well, can I encourage you this morning that whatever you thought was just a coincidence in your life should be a reminder to you that God saw your need before you ever stepped into it. And God made provision for you even when you didn't know what was going on. There was a ram in the thicket in the moment that Abraham needed it. And friend, you may not see it right now while you're climbing up the mountain. You may not see what your need actually even is when you arrive at the top, but you serve a God in heaven that has already provided a ram for you in the thicket. And He will provide every need according to His purpose and His plan for your life. Oh, Abraham needed that ram, but he still had to go and get the ram out of the thicket. He probably had to cut it free from being stuck in in those bushes and in that brush. He and Isaac had to grab the ram and tie it down to the altar and prepare the ram for sacrifice. What I love about this story is the provision of God does not exclude us from doing our part in the process. The, The ways of God often appear to be natural, But we must come in and step into the moment when God supernaturally provides and be willing to do the work that is necessary for for us to recognize God as our provider. So who does God provide for? Well, God provides securely for those individuals who are obeying and trusting His instructions. This scripture teaches and shows us that Abraham was obeying God's word. And he was doing what God instructed him to do. Abraham was willing to trust God in ways that others thought was ridiculous. Others couldn't uh, see why Abraham was doing what he was doing. Others must have thought Abraham was, was doing something ridiculous. But there was something in the heart of Abraham that understood that there's no price that you can put on obedience to God's instructions for our lives. Friend, today God has given us instructions in His Word and He is asking for us to obey His Word. And I want to tell you this morning that if we have faith to believe that what God instructs for us to do, when we begin to obey and walk out in our lives what God has instructed for us to do, the provision from heaven will flow into our lives just like it did for Abraham. And we can be confidently secure that if God has asked us to do something, He will provide in the moment of our need. So why does God provide for our needs? And I believe this is so important for each and every one of our lives because our lives are designed by God to be a reflection of His glory. And our lives are designed by God to reveal His nature to each and every one of our lives. His nature is revealed as God, as our provider. And His glory is lived out through our lives. You see, Abraham recognized God at a different level from that moment forward. From that point forward, Abraham knew that he knew that God was a provider. The faith that Abraham displayed in that moment revealed the nature of God as a provider to meet every need that arises in our life. 
And friend, I want to tell you today that if you are up against a need in your life, if you are wondering whether God really truly is a provider, I want to tell you to act in bold faith today because God desires to reveal His nature to each and every one of us. And that nature of God is that He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He is a God that will provide. He is a God that will see to it to meet every need. Here's what Philippians 4.19 says. It says, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the God that you serve, and that's the God that I serve. To where we as the people of God can stand up boldly and say that our God will supply all of our needs according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. I have a secure hope in Christ today. I am secured by the Holy Spirit, set apart for kingdom purposes, and I can be secure in God as my provider, a God who meets all of my needs. Now, today I believe there may be some of us who possibly have struggled from time to time to know God as our provider. And I want to tell you right now that God can be your provider. He provided himself as a sacrifice so that you and I might find life forevermore. Maybe you say, Pastor Jonathan, I want to know God in that way. Well, let me ask you right now to simply close your eyes right in your living room where you're at. And I would love to pray with you right now so you can take your next step in getting in a right relationship with God. And if you would just simply pray and and, and ask the Lord to come into your life, I believe it will set into motion a whole new world for you where you will see God reveal himself strongly in your life. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now thanking you for each and every individual that is watching this live stream. I pray, God, that you would open up their heart as they have heard your word today and the desire is growing in their heart to be in a right relationship with you. We pray, God, that you would forgive us of our sins. Father, that you would come into our life and we want to be, Lord, someone who is growing in a relationship with you, to know you as our provider, the one who gave your life for us so that we might have life eternal and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to tell you, I'd love to pray with you. I would love to hear your story. Simply message the Bridge Church uh, on this live stream. Leave us a comment. Send us a message. Email us. Let us know that that, uh, you are ready to take your next step in the Lord today. And we would love to come alongside of you and help you cross over to your destiny in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. And and why don't you just right where you're at, just say together with those watching, maybe you're by yourself, just say, God, you are my provider. Every knee will bow before Him. 
Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. And every knee will bow before Him. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles And every knee will bow before Him Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow before Him. Oh, He's come to set us free. Oh, Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before for him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb, and every knee will bow before him. Declare his praise, but who can stop the Lord? Oh. 